just come my way wherever I go. Hard luck is there to stay. Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. For today's grim adventure, or shall I say, terrifying adventure, we find ourselves in a place known as English Town, New Jersey. Well, this is where our adventure is going to start. You see, today we're visiting the filming locations to Damien Leone's Terrifier 2. He wants to dress up as a real guy who murdered nine people last year. Oh, you're not doing that. It's just a costume. <laughs> Aren't you that guy from the costume shop? Sir, what are you doing? It wasn't me. I'm telling you, it was him, Ellie. Right down to the little black dot on the tip of his nose. You're really weird, you know that? Speaking of surprises, kids, we have a very special guest with us today. All the way from Miles County, please welcome Art the Clown. Back to the filming location video. The reason why we're here at English Town, New Jersey, the one of the opening scenes to Terrifier 2, the laundromat scene, is filmed at a laundromat in this sleepy New Jersey town. 911. Do you have an emergency? The first shot we see of the laundromat is taken from right about here. It's kind of like a close-up shot of the dryers. The next shot we get is of the washing machines, kind of like this. Then we get a panning shot where you see the first two washers. And as the camera pans right past the front door, you see Art walking right by that bench, coming right in through the front door. And you see the bald-headed guy sleeping exactly where Jessica is sleeping right now. We now get a shot from right about here of Art the Clown walking into the laundromat covered with blood. The guy's still sleeping and right above him in the movie, there's an open sign facing the street. That sign is still here. Art pops his trash bag down in front of the soap, bleach and softeners machine. It still says $1, the signs haven't even changed. Art the Clown walks back towards the front door and this time he walks in front of the sleeping guy and grabs a hanger off the laundry cart to get himself out of the suit. I've never seen this before. This is kind of like a neat trick. As Art the Clown takes off his bloody clothes, you see this soap, bleach, and softeners machine behind him. The signs still match up, but just looking at this, something feels a little off. It looks like for filming, well, back whenever they made the movie, the dispenser machine was actually over to the left a little bit because you can see a part of the wall on the right. And staying pretty true to the scene, since Art the Clown disrobed right here, this second washer one right in the center of your screen is where he throws the bloody clothes in. And we know this for a couple different reasons. They show a close up of this area right here and you can see it says quarter slowly. It would have said insert quarter slowly. Now a wash is $6, but back when they made the movie it was $3. 
And right where he puts the coins in, you can see the light up right there, the number, 24 coins to start. And then one more thing, the locking mechanism is still the same. Again, the dispenser machine would have been over to the left and Art would have been sitting in a chair right where the dispenser machine is now. And he's laughing while he's reading the newspaper. We get a close-up shot of Art the Clown. He's sitting right here. And then he turns and looks right over this way. And this is where we first are introduced to the pale girl. The creepy smile on both of their faces cracks me up. Jessica, you would make a very good pale girl. It's a comical scene. I mean, it's a very gory movie, but at the same exact time, it's, it's, it's pretty funny. It looks like when the pale girl walks over to Arthur Clown to play patty cake with him, she's standing with this behind her because you can see that dryer, that wall, and then that white door Back then, well, when they made the movie, it wasn't that long ago. It looks like it was blue. And here's another sign that's still here. Dryer rules. No shoes, rugs, or plastic items allowed in dryer. The management. That can be seen in the movie too. It's at this point, the sound of them playing patty cake wakes up the sleeping man and he's treated <laughs> to such a sight. What a sight this would have been, right? The guy wakes up and he looks right down this way. And this is where he sees Arthur Clown naked playing patty cake with the pale girl. And this is where you also find out that she's in his mind, that he's just bat crap crazy. It's not a big laundromat. I'm kind of walking around seeing if I can find, <laughs> and there it is, a yellow mop bucket. Because in the movie, this is how Art the Clown cleans up after himself. And of course, there is a mop bucket here. How fun is that? And we are just getting started. If you're a fan of Terrifier 2, you're gonna love this video. If you haven't seen Terrifier 2, do yourself a favor and watch it. Just prepare yourself. The next location that we're visiting is the school of Sienna and Jonathan. I wonder if we're gonna find a possum or, ooh, baby kittens. In this scene, the camera is tracking alongside this fence and you can see those bleachers. And when the camera gets down to right about here, this is where Jonathan comes into view. Now, the gates are closed right now, but Jonathan is walking right down through this walkway and you can see this building and those stone walls of this building right behind him. He stops pretty much right where I am and he looks over this way and surprisingly in the world of Terrifier 2, in the world of Terrifier, the kids at the school are playing near the dumpsters. And the dumpsters are still here. In fact, the two red ones that you can see right in about the center of your screen, those are the ones. And then from this shot right about here, this is how we see this scene as the kids find a dead possum and they call one of the girls over and say, hey, a cat has had kittens, which was a lie. And then we see a very familiar face in horror, somebody from a movie known as Sleepaway Camp. What are you guys doing? <laughs> Dude, look what Sean found. It's the new mascot. Oh man. 
<laughs> What's going on? What are you boys doing back here? Oh, Christ. Now, here is some Terrifier 2 trivia. The reason why they chose this school is this. Some of the producers, as well as the crew, actually went to school here. So every school scene that you see from both Sienna and Jonathan took place right here. Now, I don't think we can get inside and show where Art and the Pale Girl were playing with the possum in the hallway, but it happened here. Dodgeball. Dodgeball. <laughs> While Jonathan is having his little nightmare ordeal with a dead possum, Sienna is having a moment with her friends sitting right over here by this column on the left-hand side of your screen. Let me guess. You were up until four o'clock in the morning working on that Halloween costume again. As I pan the camera over to the left, you see that building with the stone wall on the other side of the grass? You can see that in this scene as Sienna has a bit of a freak out moment and she runs away from her friends down along a chain link fence. That fence is no longer here, instead it's this metal one, but it's right here near the entrance where she proceeds to tell her friends about what happened the night before with the fire in her room. Sienna, talk to me, what's going on? We, we had a fire last night, I must have falling asleep with the candles burning? It was pretty bad. Okay, how All bad right, is this it? one is for the Levy family. If you are watching this, Lou says hello, and he's very proud of you guys, and he was very happy with showing us around. So, good job. And Terrifier 2, the old carnival, is actually a real place. Historically in Brooklyn, it's known as Nellie Bly, but now the amusement park is called Adventures Park. After the nightclub scene, Sienna is in the car with her friend and she's having a pretty, pretty bad night. She just finds out that her best friend slipped her a molly to help her relax and try to unwind a bit. She's pretty pissed off and she wants to go home. And it's around this time that she gets a phone call from her brother, Jonathan. Well, she doesn't know this. We do because we're watching the movie that it's actually the pale girl calling her, or is it Art the Clown? And he tells her that he's at the old carnival. Hello? Sienna, I'm in trouble. No, I need your help. You have to come get me. I'm at the old carnival. Eric and Sean left me here. I'm all alone. Hey, my phone is dying. All right, just wait by the main entrance, okay? They arrive at the carnival from this direction. In fact, they drive pretty much right towards where I am standing. And then they turn and they park to the right. And as they do this, the camera pans over this way. And as they do this, the Ferris wheel comes into view looming over the old carnival. Man, it's terrifying. The name implies it's terrifying and it is. When you watch the movie, the exterior shots of the amusement park, the old carnival that were filmed here, you really can't line up anything, but if you look very carefully in the back, you'll see every single one of these rides. From the Ferris wheel to this crazy thing right here. And it's off season right now, so we can't get on the ride, but trust me, if we could turn this thing on, we'd be on it in a heartbeat. Out of everything, I think the Ferris wheel could probably be seen the most. That and the merry-go-round, which because it's off season, it's not fully put together yet. But there she is, look how massive that thing is. Now I point out the merry-go-round because Sienna keeps telling her brother, hey, I don't know where you're at, come meet me at the merry-go-round. And he says, I can't, I'm stuck. And she says, well, where are you? What do you mean, stuck? And all he says, via text, the terrifier, which, is a dark ride. Come on, answer me. Where are you? I'm searching all over the place. Listen, I'm gonna wait for you by the merry-go-round, okay? Do you hear what I said? Meet me at the merry-go-round. Again, everything's closed for the season and things are covered up, but this might look familiar to you.
Now, let's do what we do best. Trying to line up shots, and we have some stories about this guy right here, which was filmed right here at Abracadabra NYC. Of course, I had to wear the costume. Come on over. For a small fee, Zoltar will give you a word of wisdom. See? It was meant to be. We are first introduced to Abracadabra through this mirror right here. It's like a two-pane mirror. And Sienna is standing in front of it, trying on wings. And what does she say? I can't believe I'm reduced to a pair of cheap store-bought wings. Do these look too small? And as she does this, this is the, the same exact spot. And right behind her, you can see this red woman. She's like a, a figurine. She's still here on this property. In fact, she's upstairs. I can't believe I'm reduced to a pair of cheap store-bought wings. You think these are too small? How big do you want them? You're gonna be knocking over people's drinks and shit all night. I think they're cute. Now, this might be a great time to point out that everything that we are wearing or showing, any props in this video here at the store, can actually be bought here in the store, including Sienna's wings, including Art's costume, including Art's face. Before we go upstairs, there's one more scene that I want to show you guys. It's whenever Sienna turns around and she comes face to face with Art the Clown. It happened right here in this doorway. In fact, this shield is not the same exact shield, but it is a shield in the same exact spot. The very next scene has Sienna running up these stairs just like Jessica is doing. There are sunglasses on the right-hand side of the screen. And in the movie, there were sunglasses on the left-hand side of the screen. Those aren't here, but they still are on property. In fact, they're back here in the mask section. Well, there's Art the Clown right there. But this one right here. Now pay close attention to it, the wooden one, because you can see it in the shot. Sienna comes running through the store right down this aisle. And we know that this is the right one because there's a bunch of pumpkins on the counter. And when she stopped right about here, the clerk asks her, hey, can I help you? Do you need anything? And you can actually see the scaffolding, the metal scaffolding behind the counter, as well as the stereo system up there on the wall. Can I help you find anything? Sienna comes up to the counter, and we get this shot right here. And then this is where the fun with art begins. I mean, come on, at this point in the movie, if you made it this far, you know what kind of character art is, and this just is one of the most comical scenes in the entire movie, and it happened right here. I can't believe I'm standing here gonna do this. So Art starts this scene standing like right about this, all hunched over. And in fact, you see this as well as this wooden stairs behind him. And he turns and he grabs sunglasses, very similar to these ones. They sell these here at Abracadabra NYC. These aren't the ones from the movie, but they're ones very similar. They have different colors to choose from. And Sienna turns around and he's standing here just like this. Oh, he's just getting started. It's at this point where Art takes a party favor off the shelf, puts it in his mouth, and starts blowing into it. And I was going to do the same thing. But if you're going to put that in your mouth, you got to pay for it. That's what they told me, so he can't do that. So instead, I'm just going to stand here and freak out their customers. Sir. If you're going to put that in your mouth, you got to pay for it. Now pay attention to this Zoltar machine that's right behind me because the very last scene that we're gonna show that happens here happened right next to it. You see, after Art turns this sign to closed, we see a little boy 
peeking in because he wants to buy some costumes or Halloween props. And he sees Art standing here like this. Hi there, I'm Michael Levy. You might recognize me as Will the Exterminator in the original Terrifier film. I'm also a producer and the assistant director on Terrifier 2. And right now, as I'm sure you can notice, we are in Vicky's psychiatric hospital room. And we're on the set here where we actually shot it in Staten Island, New York at Bailey Seton Hospital. And here you could see is the faded blood. It's still here. How many years later of shooting. Um, didn't, didn't clean it out. Figured, uh, you know, they, they liked it, I guess, you know, part of the whole, the whole experience. So as you can see here, this is where she was on the wall and, you know, writing all the letters and putting everything. And uh, this here is her bed. It's actually in the same position of where it was in the film. This over here, this little toilet sink was actually over here in the movie. And um, this room was built by uh, our producer Phil Falcone and our DP George Stuber and uh, a lot of our PAs that helped. And uh, these bars we put up, well, when I say we, I mean Phil. I just, you know, sat here. Um, but yeah, he put up all these bars here and uh, then we kind of painted these walls. There were a few electrical outlets that were all in here and uh, we covered them with tape and we painted over them. And then believe it or not, this was an opening at one point. So we built this fake wall and uh, we matched it to the colors that Damien Leone wanted, uh, that he felt were you know, conducive to how he wanted the mood to be in this, in this room. So we had done all of this, and again, this whole set was built specifically for the ending of Terrifier 2 when uh, Vicky was giving birth to Art's head. There was a radiator here, but that's no longer here. Uh, I think George Stuber took it back. Um, this here is the door where the nurse comes through and opens it, she slides through and that's where she sees everything that's happening. And Phil built this little mechanism that you can see here. And uh, actually the outside hallway that's here is in a different location. Same building, different spot. And uh, Phil had put this wall up, we'd put this wall up here to match the wall on the other side. So this way you can't tell that it's two different locations. And then we match the door on the other side as well. So you'll, you'll be seeing that and uh, taking a look at that. And uh, yeah, so. We kind of just uh, did this after we had a different ending that Damien Leone had put together for uh, Terrifier 2, and then we found that it was too similar, similar to another film. And so Damien came up with this idea, and literally months before being released, we went back into production and changed this ending and uh, made sure that we kept Chris Jericho in the movie. And uh, I think you guys are, should be happy that we did that. I know I am. And uh, yeah, so here it is, Vicky's Cell. You ready to line up some shots? Yeah. Tell us some more stories. Yeah, I am. I'm excited. I'm happy to have you guys here. <laughs> All right. You ready, baby girl? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. <laughs> so right here is the same exact elevator that we used when Leah was coming out this way, headed towards the nurse's station. And George Stuber, our DP, was backing up just like this. <laughs> and landing right about there. There was a, a pumpkin here. As we come over to where Chris Jericho was, where he was watching Planet Nine from Outer Space, and about here is where they had that dialogue happening where he's watching the TV, there's a lot of security cameras up there. She's sitting up here, she's humming the Clown Cafe song. There's the tray of eyeballs that are sitting right over here. And um, yeah, this is where it all happens. And a fun little fact, if you guys look ever so, ever so close, to the monitors that are on the screen, you could see a little Easter egg. Our production company, Fuzz on the Lens, the truck, the grip truck, is actually in the corner. We could kind of see it, it says Fuzz on the Lens Productions. What is that? 
And of course, in the spirit of Terrifier 2, it would have been really cool to be here during Halloween, but sadly we're here for St. Patrick's Day, but not sad because people do love St. Patrick's Day. I'm sure Art loves St. Patrick's Day too. He has to love something, right? I think he's a fan of Guinness. <laughs> now this is a really cool shot. Wait until you hear this. So right now you're coming off a wall where we pretended that there was a window. We put a piece of plexiglass up and we were pouring bottles of water down to give that little bit of imagery and uh, mood. Then our nurse comes down the hall here. She hears Victoria in the room screaming and she comes up this way and this move is the exact same way it was in the film. And she comes to our door here that's similar to the other door, goes to pull, but that one doesn't open. So then we cut into the other room over there where it matches and it opens and boom, movie magic, seamless cut. So one last shot here at the hospital, and we're gonna talk a little bit about it. So Jessica is in the same exact spot where Samantha Scafidi would, be, would have been sitting. And you can see right below, right now there's actually no blood, but that's where we had the big giant trail of blood that was leaking out of Art's head. And to the right, you can see some moonlight that we accomplished by putting a few big lights outside our window, blasting them in with a blue gel. George and Steve are, actually, are really, really great at, at creating these effects and shadows and lighting and that's that blue light that's on the floor. And then the left-hand side, you can see that hot spot over there, and we're accomplishing that with a practical light, a hanging light, that uh, we just have that little bit of warm glow to give that differentiation. So right here, we may be in a spot that you might not recognize, unless you've seen another one of our films called Abnormal Attraction. That's a quick plug. Uh, we shot in this hallway as well, but this hallway, we actually did the original ending for Terrifier 2 where if you've heard any of Damien's interviews, he talks about the ending that was changed. And in this version, we had Chris Jericho and Leah Voicy run up this hallway and heading towards the other room that we had Victoria Hayes in originally, which was a padded cell. And what happened was a certain horror film came out that was the ending, it was very similar to the concept that was going on. You might know it called Malignant. And uh, when we found this out, Damien immediately went back to the drawing board, says, you know, we don't want to have anything that's similar. We want to do something that's totally different. So uh, he came up with this new and totally cool and awesome revamped ending, which is the one that you see in the film. And it's quite different. And because of that, this hallway was cut out of the movie. But what we did do in it is we had some really cool lights that uh, George Stuber and Steve Della Sala put in these um, these sockets up here that were flickering red and going crazy as they were running up the hall. And then again, it was just a totally different sequence that happened in the film. But I think the newer version is, is so much cooler and uh, hopefully it'll lead us into something even more amazing with Terrifier 3. Drop on by the Clown Cafe, your favorite meals on wheels. The menu is disgusting and it's full of special deals. Nothing here is good for you, so grab yourself a tray, cause food's a little funny at the Clown Cafe. So Phil, why don't we uh, talk a little bit about what this is right here. This is another one of my babies. Uh, this thing is the tank that Sienna's in. And, um, you know, we were, because we were on such a low budget, we wanted to give Damien everything he wanted, and he wanted to buy a tank that could handle it, and they were about $15,000. So on a low budget, you don't have that. Um, I asked him if it would be all right if we had wood around it. He said, yeah, sure, I don't care. So I went to town. This cost us about $1,500 and a lot of labor. Uh, my friend Louie, I haven't spoken to him in like 30, 40 years. I called him up. I know he worked with metal. I didn't want this thing to pop. So he came and helped out. There's gallons and gallons of water that are going into oh, yeah. to hold it. And, and, uh, and uh, he came and he, he helped us out big time. Um, then we shot this in my backyard on my patio. And how long before we got it out of there? Uh, it was two years. Two years. <laughs> my wife, I told my wife, because she was used to when I did the wall for Joe's War, I built a wall in my foyer. And uh, she goes, oh, no, it's going to be like the other one. I said, no, no. I said, we're going to get it out right after we film. <laughs> two years later, we finally got it out and brought it up here. 
But uh, it wasn't yeah. easy. We needed like seven guys to do it. Yep, the, the entire fuzz on the lens crew. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And, and we, we didn't know how to tilt it down once we put the wheels on because it's, it's 1,500 pounds. So we got one of the big, those big rolls of bubble wrap. Oh, that's right. And we and tipped we it. We pushed, pushed it. it. <clears throat> and, and it landed, landed on the bubble wrap. And made sure it didn't crush anybody. Yeah. So turning over here, Phil, uh, if anybody remembers in the film, this is the crypt that, you know, um, above us would be where the Fright Factory was, where Sienna had fallen through the ceiling. So again, up there is technically Philadelphia. She falls down this way into upstate New York and lands on the floor. So this here is the steps that's overlooking the crypt. And again, up here is where Sienna fell through the hole in the, in the, in the floor, in the ceiling here, lands on the floor right before the grave. And in one of the versions, yeah, um, what we did was Damien actually shot Art the Clown walking up and coming down these steps, but it ended up not making the film. But as you can see, it's all sturdy and you know, all func you know, functions. And you can go straight up. Mike, do me a favor when you get up there. Yeah. Show them how she falls through. Yeah, let me do that. <laughs> we got boxes down. Wait, hold on. We got a cardboard box. You got there. a couple of boxes? Just one you need. Yeah. Don't miss it. <laughs> so. You're not going up to the hole? You want me up to the hole? I, th I think that was the whole idea. Then you can go up. What the hell do you think? You wanted yeah. to watch you walk up steps? <laughs> I Why are you, you not walking up here? <laughs> go ahead. I don't, I'm afraid of heights. No, I'm not. Come on. Mike, go ahead, go. Don't be afraid. I'm watching you. What a sissy. Come to the end. Oh, the, uh, I help. got you. Come on. I got you. Help. Hold Jump. on. Jump. Look, we're still here. Watch out. Watch out. That's some of the, uh, that's the no, right plank. there, that's yeah, some of the right wood there. that we had up here when she fell through. Let me help you here. <clears throat> just, just let it fall. All right. So let's get on that side and tilt it this way. This way? Yeah. Like that. And right here. Oh, look at that. We can go swimming. It's a pool. Is the, uh, the pit, the hole to hell. Yep. This where is where she gets stabbed with the sword and she falls into it. It was smoking. You, as you can see, if you can, I don't know, but there were light bulbs. They're actually in there still. In here. The holes are there, not the light bulbs. No, the bulbs are in the Oh, in the, in the, in the pond? And then you had, this is the wood that she fell through. It doesn't look like it anymore, but it's... Uh... So, and there's another plank in there. But this is where she falls. She falls right here. Dave comes down, or I should say Art the Clown comes down, picks up the sword, stabs her, she falls in. And I tell you, Sienna, or I should say Lauren Levera, let me tell you something. The only stunt she didn't do was fall from that ceiling. And that's because they wouldn't Watch let her. Stuff. The stunt she, people wouldn't well, let her. Well, I, I don't think she should have, but <laughs> she did every stunt herself, which gives you so much realism. Um, you know, a quick little story about that was Damien was hiring a stunt person for her, which he did. But when she came the first day I met her, I grabbed her and threw her into my wall in the basement. <laughs> I winked at her and said, hey, cause he was hammering horn about the, the stunt double. And I grabbed her, I knew she was martial arts. I threw her, she landed against the wall the way she's supposed to. And he goes, yeah, she'll do her own stunts. <laughs> Let's go. It's like a lot harder than you think. Holy, it's cause it's dead. It doesn't really ride. Ready? <laughs> so anyway, here's the Clown Cafe. It's talked about a lot in the movie. Um, once we got it here, it was all uh, magic. What's good on the menu? Well, the food's a little funny here at the Clown Cafe. Drop on by the Clown Cafe, your favorite meals on wheels. The menu is disgusting and it's full of special deals. 
Nothing here is good for you, so grab yourself a tray. Cause food's a okay, so this is a little fire pit. Uh, the man I was mentioning before, Rob, we got him to turn a propane tank into a fire pit like you would warm your hands over the fire. And it's all controlled. We can make yeah. it different levels and heights. The cool thing about the fire is, though, that many people don't know, is Phil is a man, you know, of many talents, and one of which is being on fire. So we actually put Phil on fire in the Clown Cafe scene. He's the studio TV exec. He's laying right about here on the floor, up in flames. And Phil, why don't you tell, you know, our fans here in the audience how that came about? How did you become the guy to get on fire? Well, what happened was, uh, as I've complained about many times, I was operated on, so I wanted to be put on fire, and they asked me, I have to be able to hold my breath a certain amount of time, and I couldn't. Um, so I kept telling him, I said, listen, you got to put me on fire. He goes, I can't put you on fire. It's dangerous. I said, listen, I'm the executive producer. I'm putting me on fire. So otherwise, nobody's going on fire. Said, put me on fire. So he goes, I can't put you on fire, but I could light you up a little bit. So he put my back and my arm on fire, and he goes, Phil, if you feel the heat, it's too late. <laughs> so while we were filming, you know, Damien takes a couple of takes. I'm laying down. Dave walks through. I'm on fire. He goes, all right, do it again. Dave is walking back nice and slow, and I go, Dave, move your fucking ass. I got to get this shit done. <laughs> <laughs> so he ran back. He goes, I'm sorry, sorry. And he went back, and we did it like two or three times, and then he cut. And I, and I got it. And they put me out with the extinguishers and everything. It was fun, though. It, it was, was fun. fun to do. So next time you're watching the film, be on the lookout to find Phil on the floor. If you blink, you just might miss it, but yeah. it's definitely there. Well, thanks, George. He put the <laughs> fire right in front of my face, so <laughs> he blocked that, too. But, yeah, it was fun. It's fun. Now we have to get in this one way, shape or another, and why not here at the Clown Cafe? So welcome to the Clown Cafe, and now for the musical stylings of Jessica, or shall I say, Baby Ghoul. Drop on by the Clown Cafe. Drop on by the Clown Cafe. The food's a little funny. The food's a little funny. You're the darn right, it's a little, little funny. funny. At the Clown Cafe. So what you may not know about Abracadabra is, you know, we shot everything there in the costume shop, but then Damien wanted to amp up the effects. So again, back to the drawing board, Damien and Phil get together, they do the effects, and now we shoot it here instead with a piece that we had taken, that they had given us from Abracadabra. And, and Phil, why don't you tell us what happened here? Well, um, we wanted to make sure we were covered. So in Abracadabra, when he's getting cut up, um, there's actually the bar or the, the counter and it was pretty much like that. So I just put a couple of pieces of wood together to give you that, that look. Um, we had head down on the floor. We actually brought Jonathan back to do the uh, visual effects. This is where, one, where I say 1% of CGI came in. It's right here with, is where we added his face with Damien knew the technique. Um, so we did it here. Steve De La Sala is actually the one hacking at him. And this is the scene that gets me. I think I mentioned it already. When he cuts into the neck, to me, that's the most realistic slice I've seen on many films. And it, it, it's such a cool shot. It happens right here. You can still see the blood stain on the rug where, where this all went down. I don't want to disagree with you, but that ain't it. <laughs> I thought that was it. That's the end of the rug. We, sh we killed oh, him here. here. But, I could, but I could tell you, this is where we wasted a lot of blood. I, so I, this here is where it happened. <laughs> and this is, where, this is where Scott spilt the yeah, blood. This is, <laughs> this is where, this is where much, much uh, blood was spilt. And this right here that you're mm. fighting, this door, oh, yeah. is from our original s asylum scene. Um, I'm actually glad that we, we ended up redoing it because I had never done anything like this before and it was tough to get this to work properly and it looks really flimsy. So when we redid the scene, uh, Damien wanted a door to match the doors that would air. So I, after watching Louie work a little bit with the, with the metal, I decided I'm gonna take a shot at it and I built a door and uh, I'm so proud of that door. Like when I look at it, even this, this came out so friggin' cool on the real door that yeah, they, we used. They, they saw it. Yeah, we talked about it in uh, quite detail. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. This one's very flimsy. I, oh, I can't get it to open now. Uh, it's not 
Oh, because it's so oh, it's out. Look, it's out. There it is. Hold on. Yeah, there you go. There it is. Sa same idea, just done better the second time around. And this was from so the original. If ever needs an asylum door, come to you. Yeah, I know how to do it now. Do I want it? No, but. So probably in the background, you're hearing a lot of this, this kind of flickering, whooshy, plasticky noise, and that's what's happening right over here. And we're going to get to what's behind it. But first, we want to start out with what's right here. This, there's that noise we were talking about. This right here is the makeup mirror that the pale girl is in, and she's peeling away her skin and stuff. Originally um, shot in the Fright Factory, and Damien again wanted to amp up the effects and make it really cool. So post COVID, we came back, we did it again. Phil set up this whole makeup mirror here, and we redid the effect. And this is exactly where we, where we did it. So on the other side of the tarp is where we find Phil. And Phil, why don't you tell us what scene was going on over here? Okay, so this is where Wesley Holloway, uh, the kid with the cereal, was sitting right here eating his Art Krispies. Uh, the set was still built at that time. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty much down. But he sat right here, uh, and we filmed it within a, I'm going to say, a 10-foot square. And Sienna comes crawling to here and reaches up and grabs the box of cereal that was right here. And on the table, I don't know if you can see it, but we still have some of Damien's storyboards. Yep, that was for the, and you could see Sienna here with the, yeah, with the pigtails. Board? Yep. There you go. I would always dread looking at these storyboards because uh, it would show us that we had about 32 shots every day to get through. He'd go, Mike, here's the storyboard for today, shot list. Phil, why don't you tell us a little bit about this sketch that we're finding right here. What's this all about? Uh, we were going to have her, when she falls in the pit, we were going to have her have water, black liquid, come up behind her and engulf her. But uh, we, we went a different route with that, as you know. Um, I'm touching on your storyboard, by the way. We would see 30, 32 shots, and then halfway through the filming, I'd say, all right, we should be done with about 18 to 20, right. and we still had 32 shots. <laughs> Just to let you know, <laughs> shots were added continuously. Oh, yeah. Like, you would think we'd get through, like, yeah, we'd... we'd We'd get through like 10 shots, 15 shots, and you'd think, right, we'd have another 15, 17 to go. And lo and behold, Damien's adding one, two shots per one we just yep. did. So it would be a triple. Yep. Oh, I forgot about this one. That was it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, oh, I didn't write this one down. I didn't write down. this one down. Yeah. Okay. But so, it, wor it all worked out. Damien's a master, no doubt. But as you see, you turn the corner here, and lo and behold, more sets. This one is one of my favorite. Phil, you can touch upon There's it. There's my friend Larry in the background. Larry, the executive producer of Terrifier. There this man is. put in a lot of work. I think Mike might have mentioned that I was on the other side of the curtain, I think. Yes, uh, this, this guy, again, wouldn't, Terrifier wouldn't be done. Obviously, you know, you have Damien, you have his vision. But without these two guys, uh, you know, day in and day out, putting in the work and uh, making things happen, Larry made everything happen up here. And, uh, you know, Again, somebody who really needs some recognition. The room he's standing in, actually, which is what we were just talking about, is one of my favorite sets. And the reason is because, Phil, we designed this wall that slides and, you know, it op like right now the room's open, so the wall would cover and now you have a full room. You can shoot any which direction in Sienna's room. You could remove the wall and get a really wide shot, and I know that was something Damien really wanted, of the room. Her bed would be there. This was her workstation. We'll talk about what's on that wall in a minute, but, you know, this was something really um, ingenious that Phil had designed to make sure that we were able to get the proper shots. One of, one of the cool things about this is we had to not only build a room, but we had to match the room or the style, whatever you want to call it, with the house that we actually shot the family living in. And that's where we're going to lead into now. Not only is this Sienna's room where she did all the makeup and she worked on product like her, her outfit, which we still have pieces standing here, um, you know, still from the shoot. Uh, but 
when she's going in and out of her room during the fire and we're going, you know, we're shooting from here to 10 minutes down the road, we have to still make it look like it's part of the house. And that's where if you shoot through there, you see the hallway to the house that she actually lived in. All recreated and, um, you know, to match the other house we were in. The same, the same doors, the same paint, the same uh, wallpaper here, the same rug. Everything was to make it seamless cut, you know, going in from the hallway to the room. And what's cool is we had full control of these windows. We had built boxes outside all of the windows and we would have a fake tree out that one. I remember sitting out there blowing on the leaves and stuff yep. and George and Steve and the way they lit the whole thing. You could have moonlight coming in. It could be daylight. It could be raining, whatever. We had well, full rain, raining was Scott, right? Raining was Scott. <laughs> Put him out a, there. We with have a water no, bottle, right? We have no running water here. <clears throat> so he was out there with a bucket of water using water. all our, no, no, yeah, first using all our drinking water. All drinking water, which I cut off <laughs> <laughs> throwing it up on the window and Damien couldn't see 20 it. degree weather throwing water up on the window freezing oh, and Damien's going I, don't I need see more water <laughs> and he's covered I go outside funny story it's actually out this other room we'll, we'll talk about it but Damien did maybe 18 takes I think and I remember I says Damien what is wrong the takes look perfect he says I don't see the rain out the window mind you the window is covered like this the curtains are there and there's a crack that he wants to see just a drip of water so I said all right let me go outside and see what Scott's doing wrong he is soaked, covered with the water, throwing it all over the place. He's like, I'm hitting this window in every direction. It just wasn't showing up because of the way the light was hitting it. Finally, we ended up moving on. We saw it, and I asked Damien what take he ended up using, and I believe he said four. We went to 18, he used take four. That happened a lot, <laughs> a lot. But you know what? He wanted what he wanted. And he got it done. But it this great. is Sienna's room without the wall. Um, when, the, when, the, when the fire hits, it's right here on this desk right the wings were here the wings were here and when you're looking at the wall the fire is there then when you see it from the opposite side it's because we moved the wall and um, like I said you got your hallway and that hallway leads to a house in Staten Island and it leads to the room you guys all probably really want to see yeah the bedroom where the bedroom scene took place here we go Yep, that's about as far as that's going. <laughs> is this on? Yeah, this is on, so be careful with the wire, because now we have light. I don't know if it's doing much. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, this is where you, it all took place. You might want to take these home. That's true. This is where Ali was massacred. The bleach, the salt, the scalping all happened here. Phil's got a lot of stories to talk about this scene and, and, and a little bit more about this bed and the mechanics of it because he built all the effects with Damien. And uh, that whole puppet you saw on the bed is the work of him and Damien. And uh, he'll talk a little about the ingenuity to happen uh, with it all. But I just want to kind of touch upon, we had shot this scene once first before COVID. And when COVID hit, you know, Damien kind of went back to the drawing board and says, we can really amp up this scene now that we have time. And what you see on screen is what we ended up amping it up to. And Phil, why don't you talk a little bit about what really was done here, the, the, okay, the bad shut reason. Shut no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, this, uh, this scene, even though it was intense before COVID, uh, when we had the break in COVID, Damien said, it's fallen flat, we gotta match Terrifier 1. We, I shouldn't say Terrifier 1, we, should, we have to match the scene in Terrifier. And in order to do that, we had to amp it up, like he said. So what happened was, um, you know, we had a real bed here, by the way, and he does all that work to her on the real bed with the real girl. Then when it cuts to the animatronics, which is what me and Damien built in my basement, Damien turned to me and he said, I, I would like her to move. I would like her mouth to open, her head to move. I said, I've never done that before, but let's try. So I, uh, I, I attached some fishing wire, put it in the head, didn't even know what pound test it was. And Damien's pulling on, pulling on, pulling on. I'm going, Damien, it works, leave it alone. I don't know how long it's gonna work. He just, he said, might as well find out now. Pulled it about 40, 50 times. Then we came here. He says, how do we get it to move on the bed? I said, we gotta take the bed out, build a new bed. We built that, cut holes in the wall, cut holes in the bed board. We attached pipes to the doll. And I moved it from behind the wall on Damien's 
uh, direction, head, mouth. Steve, poor Steve Delasala was under the bed, <laughs> moving the, the body with all the blood pouring down. So he, he had to deal with the body, the blood, the direction. Cow um, falling on that, Yeah, I mean. The, you can it, see what he was covered in by the end of it. That, that's all under the bed. That's all the blood. It was pouring on him. Um, and uh, that's how we got that scene to work. And it was very intense. That, that scene, getting the blood, getting everything to work the way it did, that, that was a bit rough. And this is that window we were talking Not about where Damien was trying to catch with the dolly scene coming across. The Scott was out there with the water. Yep. This was it. It was the curtain here. But something I thought that was cool that's still here, Phil, is this prop here that we see in the film of Allie and her mom when uh, she's getting hacked to pieces. Now, also understand that this is just a padding, a thin padding. It's not the real bed, which means this is not what you actually saw. This is just the remnants of the blood that went through a comforter, a sheet, and everything else that was on top of it. That's how much blood was there. There's still some blood still some in left in here. Let's see if it's got any. Oh, it does. <laughs> So what's really cool also about the way this room was designed is you can see the space through here. Now we were able to put lights through here, but mainly we were able to get our sound guy so we can really, you know, get really wide shots and stuff. So our, our sound guy would have the boom mic arched over across, and this is how we did it in all of the rooms. He was able to come up over top, over through the walls, and we weren't worrying about shadows and things like that. You ready, La? Yeah. Maybe, which way are you going? No, go inside. Go inside. New horror film. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. So yeah, as you can see, the wall moves, and now you have a full. There's Sienna's room coming in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it comes in like that. <laughs> and there's. Is this also the same one now, that was on you fire. See, no. no. Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. This so is, is just repainted. Yeah, it's just repainted. You, now you see where that slit is. <clears throat> yeah. The little hole was where the fishing wire was to open her mouth. The long slit is where I had the PVC pipe so I could move her head up. And that matches the back, the back of the bed, if you notice the, the headboard. Um, you have the, the wire for the, for the mouth and the line for the head to move up. Now, what Mike was saying is right over here, even though it's not there anymore, once we did the fire scene in Sienna's room, we came back because it was cut out where we had to put the, the, the fire bars. And we had to plaster it, paint it, tape it, paint it, do all that. And now you have your yellow room. You close it up, and we put locks on the side so it would pull it tight, and you don't see no corners. I mean, you have, I don't know how many kills in the movie, but each kill is special effects. It's all, it's all practical effects. There's no CGI. If you, if you got 1% of CGI in our movie, it's a lot. So every prop that you see, me and Damien had to build. Now he's the director, he's a producer. I'm a producer, I'm not the director. Although, I Although you a are great a director. One. <laughs> I would have been a great one. But, no, but uh, seriously. Um, so we, we were, every scene, like we prepped for, I don't know how many months before the movie starts, but like we said before, Damien likes to add. Once you add, that means new molds, new, no, new body parts. Um, my daughter, Lisa Marie, is all over the movie. I, I, all, all every time I need a hand or something, I go, Lisa Marie, come here, mold her hand, mold her leg, my wife's legs. So, you, you know, that takes time to do, and Damien has to paint everything we make. So, you know, we're doing all these things. We did, like, even the, the club that he uses. Damien goes, I want, I want to do this. I think it'll look cool. And I said, what do you want? And he told me. So I put it together, and he goes, ah, oh, man, that's amazing. That's great. But now I got to do three of them, and then I got to mold then you gotta it. Then got to do rubber, then, like rubber right, off ones, and hard ones. Then I got to make it in rubber, <clears throat> so that when he's swinging it, we don't kill somebody. Matter of fact, that was my scariest thing. I have a separate. I made a separate box just to carry that thing, because it's deadly. It's a deadly piece of equipment. But I had to make two foam ones, and I had to make two real ones. And, and the thing, Very time the thing too about being up here and shooting was 
it wasn't just the shooting that was up here. Again, there was all building here and it was putting everything together. So that started in like, let's say July of 2019, maybe May of 2019, like around that time. Then we're shooting back in Staten Island in October of 2019. Then we're, then we're back and forth here and then COVID hits and we're delayed and we're coming back. And then once we get everything shot, like Phil says, you know, Damien goes back to the drawing board after seeing the film in place and says, oh, we should amp this up, change this, add to this. So now we don't have those locations maybe where we shot them, we recreate them here, which you'll end up seeing a few on the way out. This way, you'll see we recreated the coroner's room. We recreated some of the, the abracadabra, the costume shop. There's a little floor in the rug we recreated. We recreated Art, Art the Clown's um, lair. lair that, that you did like three times at this point. <laughs> I know, I'm not doing that no more. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna buy a lair. But I could tell you, you know, you bring that up, uh, I just wanna, interject for a second, that kill in Abracadabra. I know this kill gets everybody, but when that cleaver hits his neck, that's the one that does it for me. I, I still do that. It's, it looks so real. I mean, we stuffed, my friend owns a deli in oh. New Jersey. Sal Scroy, he owns a Bella Talia Jackson. I used to go to him and say, I need, I need intestines. He'd go, what? And I'd go, I need, I need to make intestines. What'll look like intestines? And he would take his sausage wrappings and get meat ends, you know, just scraps. And he'd put it in, he'd go, do whatever you want with it. And I, he would give me like 10 pounds of intestines and I would squeeze out some so it looked a little real, put some blood in it. But we filled that neck with shit that Nobody should have to play with. <laughs> and going back to your CGI, it was the best because four o'clock in the morning, we're all like this with tubes in our mouth, blowing the blood out. That was our CGI. Yeah, it is. So Show him. That. Just get a shot of him blowing yeah, into we, that we, thing. We just, four o'clock. Hold in the on. Now, I want to go over there. Go over there. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Everything would be filled, and everything would be sticking out like they were explaining that Damien would. Uh, put these in where you couldn't see them, and it was all of us holding the pipes and just blowing in, blowing out the blood. So that's how, that was our CGI. <laughs> yeah, and it was mostly four or five o'clock in the morning, though. It was a was lot it? of late nights with that. So yeah. It was good. Oh, yeah. And action. So why don't we walk this through like a crime scene. Allie starts running through the bedroom here with Art the Clown chasing from behind. She comes and grabs this, throws it to the floor to try to slow him down. She goes to the window, tries to escape. He grabs her, throws her towards the bed. The curtain comes off. Now, Allie's laying on the bed right over here. And this is where, boom, the eye gag happens. Boom, slices her right in the eye. Throws her over this way where Phil is. Yeah, she crawls her way up to here. In a panic, he grabs her and he starts scalping her. Starts cutting through her forehead, pulls the skin off, and she's scalped. And then they make their way back to the bed. He throws her on the bed again. Right around here, starts stabbing her all in the back. Everything starts happening there. Again, twists the arm, snaps one off, um, then rips open the fingers. And then right after that, she yeah. ends up on the floor. She ends up on the floor. She crawls to where Jessica is standing. And this is where he leaves for a second. He comes back with salt and bleach and he throws it upon her. And uh, then after a while, she, he leaves again. And uh, actually we cut away right. to uh, her mother. And Jessica, why don't you show what happens after that, where she ends up. And action. <laughs> I talked over you. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's it. And if you look closely in some of the scenes, again, you could still see some of the props. You could see this in the film, Allie and her mom. You could see this over here. These are still actually in place. Sienna and Brooke and Allie, this picture is still here. So all throughout the room, our props that we have had <clears throat> and our set design is still in place. Okay, so bringing you to the morgue. Although we didn't shoot most of the morgue here, we shot most of it in uh, a building upstate, but we couldn't do this in the morgue. It was a little too uh, bloody. Uh, we built a semi-stage. We put a background with the, with the wall that matched the uh, morgue scene. And this is our morgue uh, coroner. And this is his face after two and a half years of laying in a box waiting but 
This is him. He got beat with a hammer. Lost his teeth. That was a tough one, the teeth. Cracking the teeth because we had to set the teeth inside silicone, which is tough, and then get it to work when he got hit with the hammer. So this is... Ah! And we did the blood through a secret compartment that we built. And once again, our man Steve was underneath. But that's where we did this, the, the insert. He's a big fan of being on his knees really low. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He might have something to say about that. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, this is my favorite head from any movie. <laughs> Mike would like to think it's his. There's two severed heads right there. <laughs> okay, so right out of the bedroom scene, uh, what we have here is the original bed that she's on when she's getting mutilated. And then we had to cut to, of course, the, uh, the structured bed that we got to use for the animatronics. And if you see right behind me, even though this is not where we filmed it, this is what we used this was built in another facility as Art's Lair. Um, I have all the pipes. I have everything that we use to build it in another area. Um, the black pipes that are behind it. This is all the PVC that was used to make it look like there's plumbing there. Here's the black pipe that stands up in each scene. Um, and that's the real table. And somewhere in here is the seat that he's on. Do you still feel that way? People are frightened by the way that I look. There's a lot of controversy surrounding his supposed death. The authorities issued a statement claiming that- And you had built this like three times now at this yeah, point. Yeah, this has been built three times, I said. If I gotta build it again, it's gonna be over here, and I just have to put the pipes where they belong, and a stone wall here, and we are done. Never again, now we'll never need it. Never need it again, the, the, that's right. The cool, the cool part also about Falcone Studios, as we like to call it, <laughs> is right over here where the coroner stuff is set up right now. We had actually driven in the car that Art the Clown was driving when Jonathan was in the back seat and the little pale girl was in the passenger seat and he's laughing and giggling and smiling and the uh, Jonathan's passed out and the phone call happens. That all happened right here because we shot it in broad daylight. So this all got pitch black, dark in here, it looked like nighttime. We have uh, a couple of our PAs and lighting people all turning. And when I say lighting people and PA, there's, there's, really, there's only nine people that made this movie, so it's us. Uh, sitting there turning with the lights and pretending it's street lights and stuff and you got a few other ones like Phil were pumping the the back of the car and it looks like they're driving and moving and that car was stationed right around in this area and I um, believe it's the car that's up the hill they are both. oh so it's, it's here uh, yeah both the, ups, you know, the, the shotgun scene and then yeah the shotgun scene oh right we shot that here too yeah that's when Barb's head when when Barbara gets in the shotgun the garage that's up there yeah where and then that's also that the terrifier ride is up there and yes the and the, there. the car yep. the car that we shot <clears throat> through the window is there, even though it doesn't look like that car in the movie. And the car that you're talking about here is the car that's up there. It's the, uh, it's the, uh, it's like a, a, Bla a Chevy Blazer. I thought it was a Ford Bronco. Yeah, so it's an old those. Chevy Blazer, even though we went to a van right. for the interior. But that was but the, 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 like, uh, the front seat was that right. car. It happens to be Larry's uh, old SUV. Yeah, no, we use it just to go into the fields and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's been up here for a while. It still runs if you see it. So. Yep. Yeah, we're going to see it. We're going to end yeah. up up there. Sure. So this is where uh, the garage scene happens, where the car is full of shaving cream. And Barbara comes in and notices that, I was going to say Elliot, but Jonathan <laughs> uh, sh supposedly shaving cream. The shaved. car was parked right here. Yeah, it was parked and right she here. She came through these doors, right? And um, this is where the shotgun, everything happens and her, her head, her hair hits the walls and guts go everywhere. Um, as Phil mentioned, there was very minimal CGI budget. And the other end of that uh, went to 
digitally painting out all of the stuff that was in here, because none of this, right, in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> he was joking, of course, but someone has put a lot of junk in here. But what happens is we had the car here, and not the car you see in the movie, even though that car was here. We show the car, and then we show a different car when the shotgun happens. And what happens is she walks in through this door here. And uh, so the car is there. She comes in through here. She ends up on that side of the car. Funny thing, me and Steve are the only ones in here other than Rob, who's got the shotgun. And he's inside the car. And me and Steve stay here so as to be safe. Soon as that shotgun goes off. Now, remember, I mentioned about the neck that it's filled with all meat and everything. Well, on that skull, we had brains. We had animal brains. We had meat. We had the fake blood and everything. We're standing here. The shotgun goes off. I... I turn to say to tell Steve, I can't believe it. I look at him. He's full of blood and guts. I'm full of blood and guts. And we realize, holy crap. 360, blood and guts decimated, all over this decimated, place. Exploded. It just disappeared. It annihilated. But everything around, 360, full of blood and guts. Things are going to change. Outside, I'll show you in a couple of seconds, we're gonna show you the car we actually shot the window out of. It's that movie magic. Again, it might look a little different now. And again, it was a different car that we shot the window, but you, you edit it together and no one knows. And there it is, the infamous Toyota Corolla. It was actually Damien's mom's car. And this is where the window was blown out. They both run. Too. Yeah, they run. I mean, we, we, we tried to close it up, but we didn't close it up good. But yeah, we can see. We put here it is missing the window. So this is the window that was shot out. As you can see, it's not the same car that you see in the movie, but for everything that you did see, it worked. And turning right over here is the truck we were talking about. So this was inside the barn and this is where if you look this is where art and the pale girl so this was only used as the interior uh again the exterior was a van but the interior this is where art was sitting and pale girl was sitting and in the back here was where jonathan was laying after being drugged up and the phone call uh telling sienna to come and uh to save him all happened right here okay so we had art here sitting at the wheel. We had the pale girl in the passenger seat. We had Jonathan in the back. Very cool stuff, even cooler than that. Let's go over here. If I could get there. Almost So, there. when we get to here, this is where real movie magic works. This is the outside of the Terrifier. So what we did here was we had a miniature and we put the miniature, first of all, we backlit this with smoke and red lights and we came with uh, a miniature and we built a frame on that side to make smoke and fire come out the other side as well. But what happens is we had a miniature. As a matter of fact, me and Damien have pictures of us holding it. The miniature is no bigger than this and that high. Here you go, Phil. It the has frame the cutout. Here. So here it is. You yeah, can this, see that in the film. And this, again, right, this is yeah, how you this take... goes up against that. And we had smoke billowing out, the red light behind it. And over here was the entrance. So the miniature had two openings. The openings were no bigger than this on each side. What we did was we strategically placed it. If you pan, I'll show you where the miniature was held and where the camera was. Right here by Larry, this is where the miniature was. We, well, actually, it's it off to the point. angle. No, no, oh, yeah. off to the angle. Right. We were right here. We angled the miniature here, the camera right here, shooting it. 
and we lined up the two openings on the, on the miniature that were like this big, lined it up to match those holes, and when the camera hits, all you see is what you have to see. And that's what you go, and then you see Sienna walk it's into it. It's that forced it. perspective that just has that, that shows you that miniature and then on the backdrop, and it's, that's, like you said, the real movie magic. And you would never know it, because it's, it covers all of this. You don't see any of that metal. All you see is the red smoke coming out and the painting, which was done by Steve Jennings. Not McGinnis. Steve, Steve McGinnis. Who Steve McGinnis, does who our, actually does, does our, our comic, comic books. books. There he is. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, Jessica, but I figure the best place to end this video, this amazing video for Terrifier 2, is right here in the same exact vehicle where Art the Clown and the Pale Girl were sitting. Did you have fun? Does that make me the Pale Girl? It does make you the Pale Girl. And the camera is exactly where Elliot was. Well, he was laid out, passed out. Kidnapped. Kidnapped. It was a very creepy scene. It's a very creepy movie. If you haven't seen it, you need to. Terrifier 2. Until next time, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I've had luck. It's coming my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always a